Another series test that we have is the ratio test. So my series, n goes from 1 to infinity of a sub n, we'll assume most of our a sub n are not zero. So it can be zero for finitely many terms, but past that, we're going to disallow zero as a possibility. So what are we going to do? We're going to take the limit and going to infinity, the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. So this is why we don't want too many terms equal to zero. This is equal to a number r, which is strictly less than 1. Then we'll have the series for a sub n converging absolutely. So that means not only do we get a sub n series converging, we're also going to get its absolute value converging also, meaning if there's signs out in front, we can throw all of them away and it'll still converge. Okay, do the same limit. If I get an r that's bigger than 1 or plus infinity, our series is going to diverge. And finally, if our limit comes out being equal to exactly 1, inconclusive. We'll need to do more work. So let's look at some examples. All right, now, ratio test is going to work very well with series which have exponents in them, where n is up in the top, or factorials. Okay, I'll remind you what a factorial is in a second. So let's take an example. I'm going to do series from 1 to infinity, n over 2 to the n. So our a to the n is n over 2 to the n. I'm going to set up my ratio. Now, I don't need the absolute value signs here because all of our terms are positive. So a sub n plus 1, that's going to be n plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. I'm going to put that over a sub n. So the idea is just flip this over. So a sub n is going to be equal to n over 2 to the n. I can clean up. We'll note that the 2 to the n plus 1, the 2 to the n, it's just going to reduce to a half because the n's in the exponent are going to subtract out, leave me with a 2 to the 1 in the bottom. And then I have n plus 1 over n. And then I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity. This part here is going to tend to 1, so I'm going to be left with a half. All right, my limit's equal to a number that's strictly less than 1, so we're going to have convergence, absolutely. It's not going to be an issue here since there's no minus sign. So convergence, good enough. Try an example with a factorial. Let's try some n going from 1 to infinity, minus 1 to the n, over n factorial. Our a sub n is minus 1 to the n over n factorial. And remember, n factorial is just we're going to multiply all the numbers between 1 and n. So it'll be 1 times 2 times 3, da da da, n minus 1 times n. We take a ratio. a n plus 1 over a the n in absolute value means. I can throw away all this minus sign stuff. So I'm just looking at, so a sub n plus 1 is going to be 1 over n plus 1 factorial. a sub n is going to be, flipping it over, 1 over n factorial. And that's going to leave me with n factorial over n plus 1 factorial. Now, the nice thing about factorials, when we divide them, well, that's going to lead to a lot of cancellation. So in this case, I multiply all the numbers up 1 through n. In the bottom, I multiply all the numbers up, 1 through n plus 1. And then you'll notice all the numbers from 1 to n are just going to go out in pairs. The only thing we'll be left with is 1 over n plus 1. And then when I take the limit, that goes to 0. So that says I'm going to have converges absolutely. So that says our original series is going to converge. And we'll get for free also that the series for 1 over n factorial will also converge. Why is the ratio test true? It's all going to come down to comparison with the geometric series. So let's take a look. First, let's consider convergence. So I'm going to have the limit and going to infinity, absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n equal to r, and that r is going to be strictly less than 1. Okay, for a second, let's just call this thing behind our limit b sub n. So we just want to pull apart what it means to have this limit converging to r. Now, I'll draw in my point r, one more point one up here, and I'm going to put an interval around r. So convergence is going to say we're going to be able to find some capital N, such if you pick any small n that's bigger than this capital N, 
that all of those B sub n's are going to be trapped in this interval. So that's what it means to be converging to the limit. If you give me this interval, I tell you how to trap all the B sub n's if I go out far enough. Now, let's suppose we choose the interval. I squeeze it down just so that the top of this is on this side of 1. So that means there's going to be some space here. I'll pick any number in there and call it capital R. We're going to fix that. Then what we have is that all the B sub n's are going to be strictly less than that capital R. Okay, let's see what we just showed. I'm going to get rid of B sub n and call it what it originally was. That's going to say for some capital N, if I take any small n bigger than or equal to that capital N, we'll have A sub n plus 1 over A sub n is strictly less than R. Okay, and that stuff in absolute values. And we'll also have the small r strictly less than capital R, strictly less than 1. All right, we have our capital N fixed. So now I'm just going to churn out what that inequality keeps telling me. I'm going to have an absolute value, a sub capital N plus 1 over a sub capital N, strictly less than r. We push the a sub capital N to the other side. I get this inequality here. We move to our next n. That'll say I have a sub capital N plus 2 over a sub capital N plus 1, strictly less than r. I push the, the a sub capital N plus 1 to the other side. We get this inequality, but now I can use my first inequality to turn that into strictly less than r squared times absolute value of a sub capital N. If I go to a sub capital N plus k, we're just going to unspool that k times, and then we'll see that we wind up with absolute value of n plus k is strictly less than r raised to the kth power times a sub capital N. And you notice all of these inequalities are going to end on a sub capital N. So I might as well call a sub capital N the constant c, just for purposes of looking at series. Now let's take a look. What, do we, what did we just show? We just showed that if I take a sub capital N plus small n, I'm just going to take k out of the picture, get it back to the small n, which is what we're used to working with. Okay, remember, capital N is a fixed number, so our series is going to change as the small n changes. So if I take this sequence here, absolute value of a sub capital N plus small n, we just showed that that's going to be bounded by, from above, this constant c, which is equal to a sub capital N in absolute values, times our r raised to the nth power. And on the other side, it's going to be bounded by 0 since these are all an absolute value. Now, series for 0 definitely converges. That's just adding 0 to itself as many times as you want. You get 0. On the other side, we're looking at a geometric series. The a is going to be equal to our constant c, which is equal to a sub capital N in absolute value. Our r for the geometric series is going to be equal to capital R, and we're assuming that that thing's going to be less than 1. So on this side, that's going to go with a convergent geometric series. I can bring in the direct comparison test. I have our sequence bounded on each side by sequences, which belong to convergent series. So my sequence in the middle belongs to a convergent series also. If I write out what's happening here, we're just looking at our original series. Okay, put the absolute values in. Looking at the original series, but we're missing the first n minus 1 terms. So the result is the series converges if you start at absolute value of a sub n. Well, that's not a problem because if I take out finite many terms, that won't affect convergence. So that's going to mean our original series is going to converge. Okay, that's part one. Part two, divergence. Going to be the same argument pretty much. We just flip our less thans to greater thans. So what's happening here? I have a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, an absolute value, equal to r, which is now strictly bigger than 1. What I'll be able to do is we'll be able to get a capital R between 1 and small r, strictly. And then I'm going to recreate this inequality a sub capital N plus K, an absolute value, is bigger than R raised to the K times A sub capital N, an absolute value. Now when you look at this, note, okay, R is going to be a number 
bigger than one, strictly, so you might as well pretend r is equal to two, just for example's sake. So what's going to happen as we let k get larger and larger? Well, this is going to turn from 2 to 4 to 8 to 16. It's going to grow without bound. Our a sub n is just a constant. So what's happening here is we have this r to the k driving everything off to infinity. But our a sub n plus k is going to be bigger than this thing that's going to infinity. So the whole thing has to go to infinity. And what does that say? Well, we're going to fail our limit test for divergence. If I take the limit of a sub n, we just showed that that's going to go to plus infinity. Well, really what we need for a convergent series, that limit of a sub n always has to go to zero. So if it goes off to plus infinity, you just failed your limit test for divergence. To finish up, let's look at two classes of examples. So the first class we're going to look at is going to have extremely fast growth. The ratio test is going to be really good for testing fast growth. And at the other end of the spectrum, we're going to have really slow growth. The ratio test is really poor at detecting slow growth. So let's take a look. First case is going to be the geometric series. We have a sub n equal to a r to the n. So we take our ratio. So I'll give me a to the r n plus 1 over a to the r to the n. The a's go away. The r to the n's go away. And I'm just left with r in absolute value. Take the limit as n goes to infinity. That's just going to stay absolute value of r. Now, for our ratio test, we check whether this is strictly less than 1, strictly bigger than 1, or equal to 1. So when strictly less than 1, we're going to have converges absolutely. And that agrees with our geometric series test. If your r and absolute values is strictly less than 1, the geometric series converges. If our r and absolute values is strictly bigger than 1, we're going to get divergence. Again, that agrees with the geometric series test. And then our final case, where r is equal to plus or minus 1, so here this is just absolute value of r equal to 1, ratio test is going to say inconclusive. So the ratio test is going to recapture everything from our geometric series test, except when our r is equal to a plus or minus 1. And then we need to find another technique to show divergence. But we've already done that, so that's not a problem. Okay, other end of the spectrum, slow growth. So this is going to be the P series. Here we're looking at a sub n equal to 1 over n raised to the pth power, where p is between 0 and infinity. We have our ratio. So a sub n plus 1 is just going to be 1 over n plus 1 raised to the p. a sub n is just going to be 1 over n to the p. So we just flip that over. I could put everything under the pth power exponent, give me n over n plus 1 to the p. Then as I take the limit, as n goes off to infinity, that's going to go to 1. And then our answer is going to be, from the ratio test, answers a 1, you're going to get inconclusive. So you'll notice the whole entire class of P-series, the ratio test has nothing to say about this.